Good evening and thank you to thank you. Welcome to the Finance Subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee Tuesday, June 9th of 2020. Uh, we apologize for our late start this evening. We were having some, some technical issues, um, but uh, we should be okay to move forward from here. Um, at the beginning, before we uh, get started, I need to uh, read into the record um, about the uh, executive order regarding open meeting law. Uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th of 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the Open Meeting Law's requirements that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so, as, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This finance subcommittee meeting will be held and accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, the Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube, and Comcast Channel 12. The public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. Okay, before we get started with the agenda, all right, I'll do a roll call vote um, to meet under the revised open meeting laws. Um, okay, so um, first, um, let's see, the mayor is working on joining us and, and working out his technical issues. So we'll start with me, D'Agostino, yes. Ms. Asak? Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Uh, Mr. Minicello. Um, again, he is unable. He is. He can hear, but can't talk. He's a yes. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Um, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Okay. All right. Next, I will do a roll call to establish a quorum. I don't know why this thing keeps popping up on my screen here. Okay, um, so we'll start with D'Agostino, yes. Uh, Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. He'll text me in a second. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. And Mr. Minicello via text is a yes. All right. Okay. So on the agenda for this evening is the FY 2021 budget and then item two, any new business that needs to come before the committee. Um, Su uh, Superintendent Thomas, if you'd like to frame the issues of the evening and then we'll uh, go from there. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. First, I'd like to start with a moment of silence as uh, George Floyd was laid to rest today. Um, and obviously may his murder remind us um, the work that we have to do as a community and as a school system in our classrooms um, to bring the end of racism and hatred um, you know, this is um, him being laid to rest today. We really need to keep this in the forefront um, as we work together with the mayor and the community, uh, the school committee and the city council and our parents and students. So um, we can all move forward to rid hatred and racism within our school system and within our community. So I just wanna take a moment of silence to um, remember him being laid to rest today and also remember and, and really focus on the work that we need to go, what we need to do going forward. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna go over um, what we talked about um, at our meeting last Thursday night. Um, 
As you know, the mayor um, has given us uh, allocated to us $165,927,020 for our, um, our, our, our net school spending budget. And this is a, um, we looked at a 5% 5 5 reduction from level funding. Um, we were able to find some savings and some revenues as money we saved at the end of this year. So it's, it's more like a two, even though it's a 5% reduction in level funding from our FY20 uh, budget, um, it is a 5% reduction, but with some revenues we're putting back in, it's a 2% it's a reduction. Um, the, I wanna thank mayor, the mayor, I wanna thank uh, May Sullivan, I wanna thank uh, Troy Clarkson, the city CFO and Aldo Petronio uh, for the hard work that they did, not only with each other trying, you know, finding every dime, every dollar to try to, uh, move forward without having pink slips and layoffs um, and just doing everything we could to talk to other cities and towns to see the information they were getting. The mayor's on calls all the time with um, other mayors. Troy I'm on this call right now, Superintendent. Thank oh, you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, they are spending a lot of time talking to other CFOs, just trying to get a handle on what uh, chapter 70 is going to look like and what local aid is going to look like. So after spending several days, two straight weeks, pretty much um, researching, um, the mayor was confident to give us this 165927000 to move forward um, to set our budget um, with the hopes that obviously chapter 70 will come above um, level funding minus 5%. Um, we are getting a little bit better signs from, from the state that this number could come in uh, better, better than expected. Um, but until we get that number, we don't know. We need to go with the number the, the mayor has allocated for us. So I'll let Troy and um, the mayor and Aldo jump in. I just So that's the number we're working off of. That's the number we got last, last Thursday night. Um, and then we can go over the details. I'll have Aldo bring up the, 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 um, the spreadsheet we went over that we're working off of. Mr. Vice Chairman, if I could. Mr. D'Agostino. Sorry, I was muted. By all means, go ahead, sir. No. So first of all, I want to apologize. I'm at home. I usually do this at the office, but I'm at home and we have no internet for some reason. So um, I want to thank everybody uh, in terms of your efforts uh, as we move forward. and. The superintendent did a, a wonderful summarization. Uh, so I've been working for maybe the last uh, 11 to 12 weeks on this. Um, once a week, we did it again today at two o'clock. We have a standing call, and this isn't new to you. I've told you this in the past with the state delegation, the three reps and the one senator. I'm on four calls a week, uh, including Sunday nights with about 19 mayors. Uh, we've spoken to Governor Baker. We've spoken to the House Speaker. We've spoken to the Senate President. We've spoken to uh, just about everybody and anybody. Congressman Lynch came down and met with us just the other day as well. So, um, you know, in terms of our Chapter 70, uh, I had heard, um, you know, up to 20 percent, which would have been $40 million for the city of Brock. And of course, we rely heavily on our local aid, uh, over 50 percent on Chapter 70, as opposed to like the city of Boston, that's about 12 percent because of their, uh, their revenues and because of their uh, real estate tax. Uh, in terms of where we are right now, we still do not have a hard number or any number, quite honestly, from Beacon Hill in the State House. Um, so what we did uh, collectively, me, the superintendent, Troy Clax, and the CFO for the city, and Aldo Petronio, um, was to look at figures, look at um, what was going to uh, minimize uh, layoffs. Um, none of us expected in January when we took the vote on the Student Opportunity Act that we'd be facing this, but this is what's uh, unfortunately before us. So. Uh, my role as mayor is to make sure that I provide a budget to the city council, and it's specifically spelled out on a master of law. There has been some um, some ideas of a one twelfth budget, but unfortunately, that really wouldn't work in our in our, uh, our magnitude and size and scope of our city. So we're doing a one twelfth. Uh, we did a five percent uh, reduction in Chapter seventy, which uh, impacts uh, the city and more importantly the schools. Uh, and then also on the city side, we do, did a 20% cut in the UGGA, the old lottery fund. So that that's not impacting the schools in any way. Uh, but please know that um, any any layoffs, any rifts, um, you know, we're not taking this lightly. This is people's livelihoods. And 
you know, we finally thought Brockton was going to be at the top of the mountain, which the boys and girls and the teachers expected and deserved after all these years. So we're not there. Um, we hope that this approach is going to help us um, and that the feds do come down. Congressman Lynch felt that we would be getting some financial assistance on the local side from uh, the feds. And then today, again, the reps, um, Cronin, Cassidy, Dubois, and Senator Brady, uh, thought that we were, uh, at least Rep. Rep Cronin really applauded the superintendent uh, and, and the people that have helped on this because at the end of the day, listen, we're all products of the Brockton Public School and, and we don't take this uh, granted in any way. So unfortunately, this isn't the news that I wanted to share, um, but I have, uh, since I took office, um, indicated that information sharing is key. So this is information we're sharing. I did ask Mr. Clarkson to join the call today and I want to thank Melinda for sending him the link. So if you have any questions, relative to how we formulated this. Uh, again, Troy is here and I know all those here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Troy or, or Aldo want to jump in with any comment? Sure, thank you. Uh, I, I'll just echo what the mayor said. And, uh, you know, this was a, a long and difficult process uh, but it really has been collaborative. So the superintendent and Aldo and the mayor and I have met many, many times and, and had additional conversations. As you all know, the superintendent and Aldo have also been in on those weekly calls that the mayor does with our legislative delegation. So we did a tremendous amount of work in trying to uh, use our best estimate, because that's truly what it is at this point in terms of what our state aid numbers will be. Uh, the, the delegation was not able to pinpoint any even target or specific number. I reached out to my colleagues. Uh, the mayor reached out and has a call every week with the mayor throughout the Commonwealth. And I know Mike and Aldo did the same. So the figure that we came up with, I think uh, is a responsible estimate. Uh, and you know, it, it allows us to move forward. Uh, and it's also important to note that should the legislature at some point uh, when they finally establish a budget, come up with a figure that's more generous than what we've estimated, then we obviously at that time will ask the city council to amend the budget. Uh, but this, this number that we've developed, I think is the result of a significant amount of collaboration and thought uh, and, and comparison to other communities so that we're not an outlier. And certainly with these estimates, we're not. It's consistent um, with what many communities are doing, more generous than some. Uh, but but at, at each step during this journey, I know that it's been a priority for the mayor and the superintendent particularly to, to come up with something that was both responsible but had a minimal impact on jobs. So I, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you have on the specifics or what our thought process was, but I think uh, that that really describes what's been uh, a, a long and detailed and, and again, a very collaborative process. Mr. Vice Chairman, I also just want to publicly thank Kim Gibson, president of the BEA. Of course, we all know that the BEA stepped up and, and gave us a month latitude relative to the specific drop dead date. But Kim took time out of her schedule last week and met with us uh, in the GI room at City Hall, uh, two different days uh, to go over stuff. and. Uh, you know, I want to thank her for her leadership, but also for her advocacy, because she, uh, you know, she wasn't, she's never afraid, and I've known her for years, she's never afraid to state her mind, that's, that's why she's great at her job, but I do just want to let you know that, you know, we did have some, some conversations and some in person, they weren't Zoom, they were in person, and I think that's important to note. Thank you, Mayor, and, and yeah, we obviously appreciate the, the union and, you know, Kim and working with us to help us resolve this with as, as few job losses as, as is possible. Um, <clears throat> so um, are there any, I mean, I have some comments that I wanna make on this, but I wanna make sure the rest of the committee gets their opportunity. Um, so um, Aldo and then Tim Sullivan, um, Aldo, go ahead. I can just say um, from those of us that have been here all this time, we're usually having this conversation in April Usually we have the governor's number and then very shortly mid-April, we receive the number from the house and we're at that point, we estimate from those figures on producing the rest of our budget. And then when it gives us four or five, six weeks to really discuss whether we can add, whether we can cut, how we're gonna move things around. 
it makes the process a lot more um, smooth and, and seamless going forward. This is the first time that I've been doing this almost 25 years that I have never seen the chapter 70 number in time to discuss. And also a position where the governor's budget has basically been, re, you know, not rejected, but pulled down from us to work from. So that's what makes it extremely difficult to do what we're doing. But again, as, as the mayor said, as, as uh, Troy said, we've spoken to other communities and everyone's kind of in line. We've made our, our calls to the state delegation to come up with something that we feel is, is a good solid figure and that hopefully we can build from that. And, um, you know, as I said, as additional revenues come in, they'll change the foundation budget to a new number and we have to meet that number. So it's almost a, an automatic obligation to us, any money that does come in that um, increases our figures. So um, that's why I feel that this amount of work we've done here is, is pretty good. And hopefully we can reverse most of it very shortly. Um, Mr. Sullivan. Actually, that was my question. I was, I had for Mr. Claxon. Throughout the state, there's a ton of cities and towns. Was it 300, over 300? Are they all in the same boat? Just trying to estimate their budgets right now? Yeah, uh, well, the simple answer is yes. Uh, there's 351 cities and towns, and they're all in a similar position because they're they're without um, uh, any real concrete numbers in terms of what the budget will be. Brockton, though, uh, is, while not unique, uh, one of a handful uh, of gateway cities in the Commonwealth who rely more than 50% on state aid. So, uh, you know, smaller towns that may rely eight to 10% in total of their budget uh, on state aid can weather a 20% cut to the 10% uh, much better than we can for uh, a 20 or a five or whatever the cut is to our 50%. So the challenge uh, is amplified here in Brockton more so than almost any other community in the Commonwealth. Uh, so that's, that's really what, what made our decision uh, and our process so important that we that we really put some thought into it to make sure we were uh, coming up with a number that was responsible. Because uh, if we say it's gonna be 5% and it is indeed 10, then those consequences mean more in Brockton than just about anywhere else in Massachusetts. So that's why we really took the time and the care to come up with a number that we thought was responsible and that we can all come before you and agree on. Just one final question. If it comes forward that the, there is more chapter 70 money, we'll just add it to the budget. So the, the, the process would be, yes. I mean, it's, there, there's a, there is a process to that. So we would actually go before the city council uh, and amend the budget, which is not an uncommon process, right? Uh, it, it's done uh, in virtually every community uh, Frequently, so towns do it with a town meeting. We do it with a city council. Uh, but I, I would assume that should the the uh, the state aid picture become more generous, both on the city and the school side, that we would be asking the city council to amend the budgets to reflect those changes. Okay, thank you. Any other member of the committee have any questions, comments before I? Anybody? Okay. All right, and you know, obviously we can still have some more comment. I just wanted to, to jump in. There's one element of this that I wanna make sure I have clear and that I think needs to be very clear. And, I, and, I, and, and I, I'm sure the mayor, the superintendent, and I know I will in the, in the letter to the council make it very clear too. And, you know, one of the things that we did here um, was about saving as many teacher jobs as we could, right? Minimizing the number of refs. Um, and, and first of all, we lose good people when we do that. But also, if we, the more people that we riff and we let go, we increase our unemployment expense. And so now we're spending money on unemployment for people that were almost, that, that were highly likely to be calling back anyway. 
So um, on the transportation side, yes, that has a, a short of, of well, it, it has a short of really 2 million. It shows as 1.4 because we anticipate a, um, and correct me, Aldo and Troy, if I say this incorrectly, please correct me, but I believe we're anticipating half a million dollars in McKinney Vento reimbursement coming in. So that brings us down to 1.4. The 2 million in current year transportation savings that we transferred back to the city side, again, comes back to us in this 165. So my point is that you know, yes, we do have a shortfall at the time being on the transportation side, but we made those two moves. And instead of having a 5% reduction, which would have us staring at a $160 million number, you know, we were able to bring that down to two so that we could save more jobs and also avoid unnecessary unemployment expenses as well. Um, so it was, it was, you know, so did I, did I explain that correctly though? The way the math went, and did I? Oh, you did. You did because that unemployment, as we said, that unemployment costs that we'd be paying out over the summer were never budgeted costs to begin with for the year. So when when there's a good chance that we will see the revenue stream come back in, be better off just um, replacing items as opposed to people in the budget. Right. So. Right. Plus, we've been laying teachers off so many years straight that we really were trying to avoid that. Um, Mr. Clarkson, did you, it looked like you were gonna comment, no? Yes. Just one thing to add to what Aldo said, if there are unemployment costs and directly relate them to COVID, then uh, the, the rules uh, for that aid allow us to recoup a portion uh, of those costs and get reimbursed for them. It's up to, I believe, what, 50%, right, Aldo? Correct. Okay, great, great. Um, you know, and, and we had a transportation meeting earlier and a good point was made by the superintendent that, you know, we don't need to start making any big moves on transportation because we, we don't even know what the, that this is the final number. We don't know how many buses we're actually going to need. We don't even know what busing is going to look like, how many kids we're going to be allowed to have on buses. So there's a lot of things that we don't know yet. So there's really nothing big that we need to to do on that side here on june 9th it would be i think the superintendent would agree it would be very premature for us to take any further action on that side of it other than approving the budget and and then hopefully that'll be one of the things that we're able to restore you know with monies that come in um, but it was important to save jobs um you know teacher jobs um, as many as we could um, any comments from members of the committee questions okay um aldo is the number of rifts still 20 it's 24 and then we need to over riff by what another 24 do we have is kathy moran with us so um i'll just i can go over the um the numbers for you um so right now, um, the so what we're we're doing this through attrition as well. So we don't want to forget those positions, mm -hmm. um, even though we're not laying people off. Those are still positions we right now we're losing, uh, and again, every hope of bringing them back. But obviously, uh, doing um, a lot of it through attrition saves the number of pinks, you know, pink slips. Um, because obviously one two one pink slip is, is riff is, is too many. So again, we had it, we want to do this through attrition. So we had um, certified 24 uh, certified retirements. Um, right now, um, we are proposing not to fill 20 of those. Um, we are obvious we are filling, especially we've, we are filling jobs that we know we're going to need anything that surrounds social and emotional learning. Um, is not being cut, uh, obviously, for, um, for what our students have lost since the closing. Um, and obviously, what they're going not through now with the murder of George Floyd, we need to make sure that we are supporting our students and we cannot cut anything around social and emotional support. So, um, so, not, so with those, we had 24 retirements. Uh, we're proposing not to fill at this time 20. Um, then we have up to 20 with the early retirement incentives. 
um, we would leave those at the current time um, unfilled. Uh, and then we had the 15, the uncertified retirements, we would um, leave unfilled. Um, we had 30 um, paraprofessional uh, RIFs, and I believe that's actually will be around 15 um, pink slips because we have unfilled, we have 15 unfilled paraprofessional positions. Then we had um, long-term subs, which uh, people that you don't have to lay off that, you know, that finish the year in, in, in positions. We had certified um, five alternative career leaves um, that we were not replacing at this time. These are people that are, uh, will, won't be teaching next year, but they take an alternative career leave. So obviously we're not paying them for next year. Um, so that does save those five, that saves five um, RIFs. And then we had 25 teaching assistant positions that, um, actually 30, I'm sorry, 30 teaching uh, MTA positions that were cut, but that's only six pink slips. We have 24 open MTA positions. So that's actual six uh, pink slips that have to go out there. Then we had four either RIFs or non-filled administration positions. Um, four of those, and then that brings us to 24 um, certified RIFs, uh, pink slips, um, that we would, we, and we are now working as the executive team to make sure that in what we select for those 24 positions, and we worked on that a lot today uh, and last week, um, that those positions create very little bumping where, at you, ha where you have to do so much over um, we don't want to do a, a you know, we, we were trying to find positions where obviously they're non-professional status. Unfortunately, these are, are people that have been with us not very long at all. And again, we do not feel good about any of these cuts, but um, these 24 positions that we're going to be selecting um, will create very little um, bumping. So there's a lot of movement around the system. So uh, Dr. Moran can, and, can uh, weigh in and let you know with those 24 how many we would need um, approval up to, the up to number that we usually ask you for. Thank you. So this evening, um, we've taken a closer look in anticipation of your vote. With the 24 pink slips, um, we will hopefully hope to only have um, up to 10 involuntary transfer letters. So we're hopeful that if you are able to vote for 24 pink slips, that that would be the maximum number. Um, once we finalize that list with executive. Dr. Moran, we're having a, a, I'm having a little trouble. I don't know if everybody else is having the same trouble hearing you. Did you say you need basically 34 to cover for the, the blue letters or did you only need 24? 24 pink slips. Right. And in addition to that, once we finalize the list of pink slips, we will know exactly how many involuntary slips we would need. We call those blue slips. At this time, looking at the list, we would need up to 10 blue slips. So as Mike said, 24 pink slips, 24 RIF notices would go out this week. And then before the final week of school, um, we would look at those lists and determine how many involuntary transfers or blue slips would need to go out. But 24 RIF notices and up to 10 involuntary transfer list notices. Right. Do you need a vote on the on the blue slips or just the pink? I think. Do we vote on the blue slips? I do not believe you vote on the the involuntary no. transfer letters. No, blue All slips. Right. All right. So you need a vote for twenty four pink slips this evening. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, Mike, can I make sure I have this right? I was trying to write this down. Twenty four certified. 15 paras, six MTA, and four administrators? So uh, um, so basically we had 30 paraprofessionals, but 15 would be pink slips because there's 15 unfilled positions. So when we left, um, when we closed school on March 12th, we still had 15 unfilled para positions. And obviously when we froze hiring um, way back, um, so basically there's, there's a total of 30 paraprofessional jobs um, that are being eliminated, but only 15 of those will result in pink slips. And then there's a total of um, 30 uh, monitor teacher assistants being um, eliminated, but 
Um, 24 of those were unfilled as of March 12th. So that would only be six um, pink slips for the, M for the MTAs. Um, and then there was four um, administration, which are either through retirements or, or RIFs. Okay. Um, and, and again, more... you know, retirement. It, you know, it's when we were looking at, and again, thanks to the mayor and Troy and Aldo, when we were looking at two, three hundred less than two weeks ago, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't want to say this is good news because anytime you have to vote to send out a pink slip to anybody, because um, a person that's getting a pink slip is getting a pink slip, they're, they're getting a, that their job is being eliminated. So this stinks. There's no question about it, especially where we were uh, late in January when we added 93 teaching positions and six para positions to the budget, like the mayor uh, said earlier. So this does not feel good at all to cut anybody's job. Um, but I think in the in light of the circumstances and hopefully with some good news we're getting from the state, um, I'm still you know, amazed that we were able to get down to this number because I have seen um, other districts who are laying off 50, 60, 100, 200 people. Um, so again, even though it stinks that anybody has to get a pink slip, um, I am encouraged by the few numbers and encouraged that as we chapter 70 comes around and hopefully the state does keep in mind that they still have the Student Opportunity Act signed into law. And hopefully that, you know, they'll try to uphold some of that funding um, that, you know, we hold out every hope that, you know, this will be zero when it's all said and done. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's an important point for anybody who's watching this to know that, you know, this is not by any stretch the final number. We're not done. Um, this will continue on as we get more information. At some point, we will get a hard Chapter 70 number, and we will be able to then, you know, go and, and, and hopefully it will put us in a position to bring some of these folks back and restore some of the items that we've had to cut in order to create a a balanced budget. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we, we have to create a balanced budget to uh, bring before the city council and, and meet these uh, statutory obligations and deadlines that we have. Um, the, the All of us who've been on for a few years obviously are tired of having to let people go, tired of having to take these votes. And really we're looking forward to a year where we could uh, not do this and in fact add, you know, and bring people back. Um, and for the new people, um, I'll tell you that, that probably one of the worst days you'll have on the school committee is the day that you vote on pink slips. Um, there's, there's not too many worse days in this job um, other than the day that you, you know that, that you voted to, to put some people out of work. And it's not something we want to do. It's the worst part, one of the worst parts of our job. Um, but uh, unfortunately, we have an obligation to pass a balanced budget as much as this stinks on ice. Um, there's nothing fun about this. And, and again, to the public and the teachers, again, I can't say it enough. We're starting here. This is absolutely not the final because we don't know what the final number is and we will keep working on it as we get new information. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep going. I think, you know, this will be a busy summer for the school committee. But uh, before we, Mr. Vice Chairman, if I could, if you didn't mind, yeah, please go ahead. I just, I just wanted to let uh, everybody know a couple of things. Number one, Mike and I, the superintendent and I, have already dialed up. I mean, we're not going to hesitate um, to bring that lawsuit again. Um, I mean, the Webby case, the McDuffie case, the Hancock case, all here in Brockton. Um, so we, we won't hesitate. We've already had conversations about it. We mentioned it to Kim Gibson the other day as well. Um, you know, so if, if, if the state, um, you know, tries to uh, totally redact what promises were made without question, we won't hesitate. We'll pull that, that plug quickly. Um, another thing, just to kind of put it down to, to layman's terms, think of how any of us would try to do our own household budgeting, okay, monthly or yearly without knowing any money coming in. And that's in essence what's happening right now. Right. The city of Brockton is a municipality, four hundred million dollar budget or so. We are trying to balance a budget and trying to budget for the year without knowing any money coming in. 
it makes no common sense that we're put in this spot. But as Mr. Claxton said, 351 other municipalities are dealing with it. Unfortunately, um, you know, for good or for bad, we, we rely so heavily on that, um, that again, we're going to feel the ramifications. But I just want to let you know, as the mayor and as someone, again, proud product, product of the Brockton Public Schools and you know, my dad was a history teacher up at Brockton High for, for years. Um, you know, I want to thank all the teachers. I want to thank all the boys and girls right now with the virtual learning. And just know that myself and the superintendent of the schools and Mr. Clax and Mr. Petronio, you know, any money that comes in, we're, we're, we're going to make some fast actions and go before the council to, uh, to correct uh, what, in my humble opinion, is a wrong situation right now by not giving us the figures that we need. And I just wanted to say that I wish I was on a Zoom so you could see me right now face to face, but... Rest assured, uh, as the vice chairman just said, this is just step one, and and we hope to God that the money comes through because uh, we 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 we're owed that money by the Commonwealth, and uh, you know we're making no bones about that. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is there any other member of the committee um, that wants to uh, comment at this time, or any other questions? Okay. Um, we are unfortunately at the point where we do need to make a motion. I just want one clarifying point before we ask for a motion. Um, so if, if I, just to make sure we do this correctly, we're looking for, we would reduce the number of say para professional positions by 30, including 15 RIF notices, right? Is that what we're, you know, that's the way we want to state the motion, I think, because we're, we're reducing the number of positions overall, but some of those will be through RIF notices. Correct. Okay. We also um, have um, some non-certified, seven just non-certified. That could be almost anyone. All right. On the certified, what is the total number, including 24 RIFs of, of reductions in staff? I don't know. What do you mean? Like how many positions do we need to vote that we are reducing by? On, on the certified? Um, 24, 24 Just, actual slips. Okay, because the other ones are retirements and do not fills anyway, okay. Correct. All right, so we just need to vote on the slips. We don't have to vote on the the reductions in, in the overall number. No, they're just unfilled. Okay, all right. Well, I know no one wants to do it, but um, you know, somebody other than the you know, myself and the mayor, because I'm chairing the, the committee, so I can't. And um, but some we do need a motion um, on 24 uh, RIF notices for certified staff. OK, I make a motion to. 24 pink certified pink slips, 15 paras, 30, I mean, six pink slips for MTAs, and four administration through retirement or reps. Seven more non certified. Okay. So non certified is a total of seven. Seven. And, and plus seven. seven no, additional seven non-certified. Okay. Motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second that. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan and Ms. Asak. I know none of us wants to do this. Um, all right. We have a motion on the floor properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion before I call the roll? Okay. All right. Let me call the roll. All right, Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino, yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Um, Mr. Minicello, he'll text me. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. And Mr. Minicello has sent 
via text, a yes. Okay, so motion carries um, as unfortunate as it is. Um, so I think the other piece of business that we need to handle um, is the, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to make a motion to pass the uh, non-net, I mean, sorry, the net school spending um, budget. Although I wanna make sure I get the number correct um, of 160, 166,175,118. No, that's how much we, um, we, were, we would have requested. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes, one sixty-five nine two seven and twenty cents. Correct. All right. So not twenty cents. No, not twenty oh, cents. Twenty dollars. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So we need a motion to pass the non uh, to pass the net school spending budget of one hundred and sixty-five million nine hundred twenty-seven and twenty. I'll make okay, the motion. All right, go ahead, Tim. I'll make a motion that $165,927,020 be appropriated for our budget for 2020 All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Sullivan, properly seconded. Um, I believe Ms. Asak was first, so we'll go with her. Um, I'll call the roll on the net, uh, the, uh, net school spending. Uh, Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Um, Mr. Minicello. Yes, um, Mr. Mendez, I mean, Mr. Mendez, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. That's the second time you've done that. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking it offensive at this point. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I get myself in trouble just calling the roll. <laughs> um, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Um, Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the final item, um, I believe, that we need a vote on under this not under this topic is we need to vote to approve. And again, although let's make sure I get this correct, on the non-net spending side, we need a motion for $11,553,365, correct? Yes, correct. All right. Do we have a motion? Mr. D'Agostino? Yes. I was told I have to bring that motion forward. What happened at that meeting? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Sullivan, I apologize. We had a safety, security, and transportation meeting today at 5.30. President was the chairman, myself, Tim Sullivan, Joyce Azak, and Tony Rodriguez. There was only one approved motion, and the motion was to approve the mayor's budget, which is short $1.431,400. We move in this motion. It was voted unanimous. And we're moving this motion to finance for its approval. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, now we need a motion from finance to uh, approve the mayor's appropriation, um, which again is, is short, the 1.43, um, 400 that we need. Do we have a motion? Okay, what was the figure again, Mark? 11 million. It's 11 million, 550, wait, I'm sorry. 11 million, 
553,365 is the appropriation and which is short if you want to state that in the motion that's up to you 1,431,400. Okay, make a motion to uh, pass the 11 million 553,365 for non, is this non-net? Yes. Yes. Non-net school spending. All right, do we, we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second it. Second. Thank you, Ms. Asac. Um, and um, is there any discussion on the motion before I call for a vote? Seeing none, I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Agostino, yes. Ms. Asac. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan. Tim. Yes. Minicello is a no. Okay, so. Um, all right. So we have a motion properly seconded. It has um, passed with one no, um, the remaining yes. Um, obviously these are difficult decisions that none of us wanted to be making. And so I appreciate the committee, um, you know, working through these these really tough decisions that we've had to make tonight, and um, you know, the to the the various um, uh, members of the Brockton Public Schools who get the notices. We uh, we hate that we're in this position. We apologize that we're in this position. We're doing the best we can, and we'll do everything we can to uh, get you back. Um, okay, is there any Mr. Vice Chairman? If I just yes. had a question, Mr. Vice Chairman, for procedure, sure. since this is my first time as mayor and chair of the school committee. So that was that was favorable on both endeavors from the subcommittee, but that was that referred back favorable to tomorrow night's full school committee meeting for a formal vote. Is that the process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so tomorrow night will be a regular meeting, we'll have a formal vote. Um, this is just the, the subcommittee moving it forward. You're correct. Yep. So it was referred back favorably. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, is there any new business to come before the finance committee this evening? Okay. Um, all right. Seeing that we have no new business, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. motion. Second. All right, we have a motion to adjourn, properly seconded. I'm sorry, Joyce. Oh, no, nothing. Motion to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hang on one sorry. second. I... It's okay, sorry. Can, can anyone hear Miss Asa? No, it's all, she's got a bad connection. All right, it's all family. I apologize. I have a bad connection. Hmm? It's okay. All right, sorry, I apologize. We weren't able to, to clearly hear you. Um, all right, if there's no further business, we have a uh, motion to adjourn, properly seconded. Um, I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino, yes. Um, ASAC. Yes. Um, Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello, we'll wait for his response. Oh, he's a yes. 
Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Back to LJ, yes, from Sullivan. So we are, yeah, we, we have a, a, a unanimous motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.